TV Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain one of the episodes titled Shut Up and Dance from the dystopian anthology show called Black Mirror. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The episode starts with a woman in a hoodie driving a car in a parking lot. The woman goes out of the car and looks around the area. Her phone chimes and she nervously puts the key on top of the rear tire. Her phone chimes in again and she quickly leaves the parking lot. Inside the diner's kitchen, a young man named Kenny is cleaning the dishes. A woman asks him to clean up a big spill on one of the tables outside. While cleaning, he notices that a child has left her toy on top of their table. Kenny immediately gives it back to the child and the young girl thanks him. Kenny smiles and returns to his duties. After his duty, Kenny rides his bicycle home. He walks up the stairs straight to his bedroom when he realizes that his laptop is missing. He goes to his sister's bedroom and he sees her using his laptop. Kenny quickly takes his laptop back. His sister tells him that his laptop is now frozen because she has installed a movie downloading software. Kenny goes back to his bedroom and starts troubleshooting his laptop. He reboots his laptop and searches for a malware cleaner online. He stumbled upon an antivirus named Shrive Antivirus and installs it on his laptop. While the antivirus is being installed, he gets up to get a can of soda in his fridge. It appears that a virus has already entered his laptop and someone is already watching him. The next day, Kenny installs a hinge on his door to avoid his sister going into his bedroom and using his things without his permission. Downstairs, his mother informs him that she'll be going out tonight for a date. While eating, Kenny watches a sensual music video and this arouses him. He quickly goes upstairs and locks his door. He closes all his blinds and sits in front of his laptop. He surfs the internet for a sensual video and starts to get himself off. After pleasuring himself, he washes his hands in the bathroom. He goes back to his bedroom and he receives an anonymous email saying that they saw what Kenny did. Kenny does not believe this and scrolls down the email to see a video of him getting off. Kenny panics and he puts a sticker over his webcam to cover it. A few moments later, he receives another anonymous email blackmailing him to provide his phone number, for they will post a video to everyone in his contact list. An anxious Kenny hesitates to send his phone number. He whimpers, but he eventually provides it. He quickly receives an anonymous text message that orders him to keep his location on and his phone charged because he will be activated when the time comes. The sender also says that Kenny should tell no one because they are watching him. Kenny seems hopeless as he sits on his bed crying. The next morning, Kenny is standing in the kitchen dazed. His mother asks him if he's alright and he says that he is. His mother leaves and Kenny rides his bicycle to work. When he arrives at work, he receives a text message saying that he's been activated. His first task seems impossible as he asks to go to a location within 45 minutes, even though he's about an hour away from it. He leaves work and makes an excuse that he's feeling sick. He rides his bike and rushes towards the given location. Kenny miraculously arrives on the roof of a car park within a given time and the blackmailers ask him to wait. Soon enough, a man on a motorcycle arrives and he gives Kenny a box. He advises him that the box is fragile. The man also says that he's only being asked to do this, meaning he is being blackmailed as well. The man leaves Kenny and he receives another message asking him to confirm the number written on the box. After confirming, the blackmailers instruct Kenny to deliver the box to another location. He struggles to ride his bike while holding the fragile box so he decides to take a bus. On the bus, Kenny peeks inside the box and sees a cake with I love you written on it. He reaches a hotel and walks to the room number provided by the blackmailer. He knocks the door to deliver the cake, but the man inside tells him that he got the wrong room number because he did not order anything. Kenny asks the blackmailer what to do since the man does not want to accept the cake. The blackmailers say to tell the room occupant that Mindy sent him. Kenny says this and the man immediately opens the door. The man pulls Kenny inside the room. Inside the room, Kenny tries to explain to the man named Hector that he is only being asked to do things via text message. 
Hector asks Kenny to show him the text messages and Hector quickly snatches Kenny's phone. Hector reads the messages and asks Kenny who the people behind the messages are. Kenny says that he does not know them. Hector asks him why would he follow such orders, but Kenny does not answer. Hector's phone rings and he receives a message from the blackmailers. Hector is clearly stunned by the message and goes into the bathroom to vomit. Kenny asks the blackmailers if he can go now, but they say no and they order Kenny to take a photo of Hector. Hector drinks a bottle of beer to calm himself down and explains to Kenny that they have to do the task given to them together. Hector tells Kenny that they have to bring the cake to another address using a car that is given to them. Apparently, the blackmailers have sent Hector a license plate to find the car that they need to use. Hector and Kenny leave the hotel and go straight to the parking lot using the license plate given to Hector. They find the car. This is the same car that the woman left at the beginning of the episode. Hector takes the keys from the rear tire and drives. During the car ride, Hector reveals that he's already got a family. He joined a website primarily used for finding cold girls and he talked to someone named Mindy. He is actually waiting for Mindy in that hotel room. He says that he sent Mindy sensual pictures of him and his body parts, but it turns out that Mindy is just a pretend account of the blackmailers. Hector says that if his wife knows about this, she will leave him and she will definitely win custody of their children. Kenny tells Hector that the blackmailer has filmed him getting himself off and will send a video to everyone he knows if he does not follow their orders. Hector says that it should not be alarming since everyone does that unless Kenny is watching something. Kenny does not answer and Hector realizes that the car is running out of gas. They go to a nearby gas station and Hector fills the car. He asks Kenny to pay the gas to save time and gives his card to him. Kenny enters the convenience store and pays for the gas. When he comes back outside, he sees Hector talking to a woman named Karen. Karen is Hector's friend from their kid's school. Hector introduces Kenny as his nephew and he lies that they're going to the train station. Karen requests to ride with them back home since her home is en route towards the train station. Both men reluctantly agree as they are losing the time given to them. On the car ride, Kenny and Hector both receive messages from the blackmailers that they are going the wrong way based on their GPS. Karen continues to talk to both of them and both men try their best to keep their cool. The blackmailer orders them to turn around and they should be on the location within 20 minutes or they will leak everything. Hector accelerates the car and Karen is taken aback. They drop off Karen and rush straight to the location where they arrive on time. The blackmailers order them to look in the cake. Hector digs into the cake and reaches into a bag that contains a cap, a pair of sunglasses and a gun. They are ordered to decide who will be the robber and who will be the driver. They realize that they will be robbing a bank. Kenny is clearly stunned by their next task. Hector says that he will be the driver because Kenny cannot drive. He convinces Kenny that robbing a bank is easy and if he won't do it, his video will spread across the internet and it will be forever be there. Kenny cries saying that he cannot do it and tells Hector to shut up. Kenny leaves the car and breathes heavily as he walks straight to the bank. Inside the bank, Kenny points the gun to the bank teller and he pees his pants as he does this. He gives the teller his bag and the teller quickly loads it up with money. Kenny gets the bag and leaves the bank. Outside, Kenny finds out that Hector is gone. But Hector comes out from a small alley. Kenny hops into the car and Hector drives away. Hector notices that Kenny peed his pants but he does not say anything. Kenny is very rattled but Hector calms him down so they won't be caught. They are stopped by a stoplight and run into a police car. Fortunately, the police do not inspect them. The blackmailers order them to take the money to another location. Upon reaching, the blackmailers split the two by asking Hector to destroy the car and asking Kenny to take the money into the woods. Hector apologizes to Kenny for calling him stuff earlier and Kenny leaves. Kenny walks into the wood and sees another victim waiting for him. The man stops Kenny from walking and sets up a drone before talking to him. He informs Kenny that they have to fight until one of them is dead and the blackmailers will be watching them through the drone. The man says that he only looked at some pictures and Kenny says that he also did the same. The man asks Kenny how young the subjects are but Kenny does not answer. Apparently both of them look at children's images while getting off. 
The two are asked to fight until death and Kenny takes out the gun from earlier. He points it to the man and the man starts crying. Kenny points the gun to himself. He tries to shoot himself, but it turns out that the gun is empty. The other man charges into Kenny and the two starts fighting. Hector goes back to his home. He climbs upstairs to check his children and he receives a message of a troll face. He enters the bedroom and sees his wife looking at Hector's pictures and evidence of his infidelity. The blackmailers have leaked all these, even though Hector has completed all the tasks. The woman from the beginning of the episode also receives a troll face. It appears that she is a CEO and her emails of race discrimination are leaked all over the internet. Back in the woods, Kenny has won the fight and he is seen walking away. He receives a call from his mother and her mother screams helplessly about Kenny looking at kids. His mother also says that his sister has already seen his video. Kenny is shocked by his revelation. Kenny then receives a troll face and the police arrive to take him. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel. Thank you.